So, onward and upward, and upward into stage 3. We are now going into what is normally classed as quite a hard stage 3, but I actually find Marissa really kind of helps me on this one. I think it's just because of the faster movement that I'm used to, but yeah, it's you can kind of flail around this first bit of a Marissa and it doesn't make a difference, but yeah. A lot of it is attacks coming from both sides of the screen, which is a bit easier to deal with when Marissa you know, moves fast, so that's kind of why I like Marissa for this. And then this bit is going to be effectively streaming, so just make sure you get everything aimed at you first, luckily avoid a blue circle there, and then stop paying attention because of that lucky dodge. Oh, whatever, whatever, it's always annoying to have shit like that happen, but what can you do? Anyway, we're already at the mid boss, so pretty short stage I guess, it's just tricky to get through at times. However, Kine herself is obviously going to come up more later, so I'm not going to say too much about her. She relies really heavily on familiars though, so Marissa is generally very good at um, crippling her most of her attacks. So, kind of unfortunate that I have to do it that way, but eh, it happens. So, she doesn't want to trust the Yokai, even though Marissa is human, but that's not the point, I guess. This spell card, well, Marissa really, really makes this one a lot simpler than she should do because of having to kill familiars. It's simple, like, you know, left-right movement type of thing, and a lot of it is streaming, so, you know, it's not that hard, but because Marissa kills so many familiars, it's absolutely, pathetically simple. Stay at this top left hand corner to collect the items that come out because there's going to be something right over here, aimed fire, which is going to get in your way if you don't do that. So yeah. And then quickly get the items, kill that thing off, and there we go. Quickly dash up to get those. Right, okay. You saw, I hope, that we got an extra life from the mid boss there as well. So, yep, definitely a handy thing to have. I really should have been killing more of these, but nah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Kill that one on the right though, because that one on the right has a bomb. So there we go. And yeah, she can't retreat any further. Oh well. Look at that, I've already got 2,000 greys and I'm only on stage 3. What the hell? Wow, that's a lot more than I expected. It's a lot more than most of the games I play anyway. Wow. Okay, well, we have over here kind someone. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name, but <laughs> she's a half beast basically who can't transform fully because the moon is corrupted. However, she doesn't really need to know that at the moment. I think no, she already does, but she doesn't exactly lead on that she knows that right now and pretty much she thinks we're attacking the village basically and well with what Marissa said at the start there surrender the humans to us now I'm fully you know not surprised that she thinks that <laughs> so yeah magic apparently is best unleashed at night I don't know I would like a word with you on that one Marissa seriously but yeah most of Kine's attacks really heavily use familiars and as we're going to see, Marissa makes quite a few of them a fair bit simpler than, you know, a lot of characters. And although Kine is supposed to be a really quite a hard stage 3 boss as a result, because I use Marissa, Marissa really makes this a lot easier than most characters. Just gonna keep saying that because it's true, you know? Anyway, Kine's theme is one of reverence, I would think. It's one that tries to make you respect her quite a lot. And to be honest, she isn't exactly a bad character, so there we go. This is a really fun non-spell pattern, which is again heavily based on familiar, so Marissa really weakens this one a fair bit. It's basically best done, you know, with a human side anyway, but I find that its pure horizontal unfocused movement is good. Now, this card, Marissa manages to kill a couple of familiars before they reach the other side of the screen, so she definitely makes this one a little bit simpler. I know it's aimed somehow, but I don't know exactly how it's aimed, I just, all I know is I just dodge it, that's it. I never, I almost never have problems with that card, so it's really not too bad. Then this one I think changes depending on the difficulty, and well... Again, Marissa kills the front familiars, so there's not quite so many kunais around. It's simple streaming after that though, you know, there's gaps which you can go into very easily, the very slow circles are no threat, and there we go. 
Same general non-spell as the last time, but I think there's a few more bullets than there was before, but I never really noticed, to be honest. All I know is I just do it unfocused, horizontal only, and it works. This card, however, well, I know the general idea of this one. Again, it's different for the difficulties, but I always manage to miss a kunai somewhere, so I generally don't make it through this one alive. Yeah. I get clipped by something, I think it was by a needle there actually, but I always get clipped by something in that card, so, you know. It's annoying because I capture that one all the time and I practice as well, but whatever. And then this one, well, it's arrow streaming and I always manage to forget where the lasers are going to cross. So I almost always end up dying to this one for some reason, even though Marissa has lowered the number of lasers that are on the screen, but you know, by killing the front familiars again. However, we managed to capture it this time, and I already have hit the 500 point mark. Wow. I don't usually get that by this point, I usually get just under that, but today I've managed to get a lot more points than normal. Anyway, last spell for Kain is actually pretty much her easiest spell card, to be honest. Really, very, very simple streaming, absolutely no danger from it whatsoever, so long as you pay a little bit of attention, and, yeah, very, very, very easy. So, yeah, that's a pretty good, um, well, that one stupid mistake through the first half of the stage, but otherwise a pretty good stage three, and I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm hoping that I don't die stupidly during the stages more than that, though. A lot of my deaths today from practice ones have been coming in the stage, not from the bosses themselves. So, you know, maybe I have had to bomb a fair few of the spell cards and stuff, but... You know, most of the stages I've not I've had the most trouble with, other than the bosses themselves. Very, very odd. Oh well, oh well. Going on to stage four. Stage four is one of those songs it has one of those songs which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's not a disastrous song, it's just not to my personal taste, you know? This first bit is basically streaming, I guess. It's if you could probably do it differently, but that's how I'm gonna go for it. Try with Marissa, try and not kill, you know, damage the fairy as soon as it comes on the screen because most of the fairies, um, most of the fairies that have lots of familiars have super armor, but, you know, so they can't actually get damaged for the first bit when they come on screen. But the familiars themselves don't have super armor, so you can kill off the familiars before the fairy can take any damage, and that's really annoying. For this bit, kill the fairies which are coming from the sides of the screen first because they will some they will generate aims slow moving blue needles which especially in this part would royally fuck you up now i'm not going to bother about collecting time out of these fairies because i just want to make sure i get them killed before too much happens as you can see most stuff is aimed at you so you know it's simple streaming really but it does get quite hectic and you know you've got to be careful Obviously, you saw there were two bombs dropped there, which is very handy, so, you know, we now have four bombs again. Very, very good. Freeze, eh? Oh boy, it's Reimu, and Reimu looks pissed. <laughs> she also has rather dangerously red eyes in this game, but, you know... Marissa, Alice isn't even here. You should not be blaming her for stuff. Jesus, hell. Look at the color of the moon, by the way. That's a very, very odd color. It's no wonder we're going to try and fix the moon at the moment, you know, because that... Ah, Jesus, crap. Let me try that again. It's no wonder we're going to get the moon, you know, back at this point, stop it from being corrupted, because that color is awful. <laughs> so yeah, Marissa is not really wanting to talk at the moment, but Alice is now going to point out that the moon has been corrupt and Reimu only noticed that we stopped the night, so now she's blaming us for corrupting the moon as well, and that is pretty much enough to get Marissa to go over the edge. Here comes pretty much my favourite quote in all of Toho. The endless night, stealing a full moon, hiding a human village and putting funny hats on statues. I can't remember what that's a link reference to, but it's something funny anyway. She blames it all on Alice, with that amazing looking face there as well. Now, yep, bitch, get out of the way. That's pretty much how it's gonna go. So, <laughs> Raymond's like, well, fine then, if that's how it's gonna be, let's go and kick your ass then, pretty much. Reimu is a very interesting boss, actually. I find her the easier of the Stage 4 bosses, but, um, yeah, she is definitely an interesting fight. However, 
Two of her non-spells are absolutely awful for Marissa solo, and this is one of them right here. Marissa is really freaking horrible to try and take this one on because all of those red yin yang orbs are fatal to the touch and I almost never get through this one without bombing so I'm not even going to probably try I might actually even use the second bomb during this if I don't get it killed quickly but maybe not, maybe not, there we go, alright okay so being a border person Raymu's cards are very strange and they're, most of them revolve around this sort of deal here or her homing stuff. Basically, this card is pretty fun, and well, I probably shouldn't do this one on focus, but I like to just to get the time, so whatever, I can do it, so that's fine. This card, this non card even, is a sort of precedence for what's gonna come next. It's basically a slower moving, but slightly f um, Dense. Denser is not the right word, but it's it feels denser because everything moves slower. But it's basically a precedence for what's going to come here. This card took me forever to work out how I was going to do. But I now actually quite like this card, and yeah, it's good fun, but I am not playing this one very well, actually. What I try and do is I try and stick in a lane, if you like, for... The bullets which spawn last time, just to try and stop them from overlapping with each other. But it doesn't always work. However, looks like it has this time, and we managed to capture it. Pure unfocused movement as well. I don't always do that on pure unfocused, but I'm comfortable with Marissa's unfocused speed. Yes, call me weird, I am I know, but whatever. Anyway, Raymu ran away, and we now have to do effectively the second half of the stage, even though the boss music stays up. It's a very strange situation, but I don't mind it too much. Now, the second half of the stage is the same general idea as the first half, but it's a fair bit harder in places, I guess, but it's much, much harder to avoid those things coming up and damaging whatever, you know, sending bullets out, but whatever. I found it very, very difficult to get both of those bombs when I played this before, but I've sort of developed a strategy to do that now, as I hope, even though I didn't really talk about it, you noticed there. Anyway, now Reimu starts using her, then properly using her, like, boundary skipping abilities, and teleports from side to side on the screen. So long as you stay at the right, you know, the proper side of the screen to start this non-card off, it's really nothing at all. You know, it's very simple aimed fire based stuff and yeah not at all dangerous to be honest so what's the point of doing it all again well there's apparently two of us there's only actually one marissa over here but yeah we're gonna get two tries this card wow good luck if you're on lunatic basically this card if you're not using Vermilia, then you really are not going to be good with this one if you're using alice good luck no matter what difficulty you're on but it's um, it's one of those cards that you probably just have to mostly learn. The arrows do give you an indication as to what direction you need to move in, and I'm disappointed that I didn't actually capture that one, but oh well. Okay, so the other dangerous non-spell. This one is basically the same as the last one, but now with red yin yangs. So Marissa, it's, it's no different if you're using a yokai, but Marissa has a harder time with this one. Plus, Raymo seems to stay down the bottom of the screen a fair bit more, so the bullets are closer to you, which is nasty as hell. Now, Fantasy Sealed Dark. This is a double streaming card, basically. She sends out, you know, grey, um, grey ones with, you know, amulets which become blue, um, red ones and aim at you, which become purple ones and go down the screen. It's learning, it's basically learning when you have to move and, you know, to order to not screw yourself always a nice thing to do not screw yourself and unfortunately I didn't get it there but oh well I just kinda I should have moved a little bit earlier at that ending bit but oh well we managed to get to 800 point items as well so more extra lives yay this is another boundary abuse card which I find really fun but I've been failing at today so I don't know the point of this one is just to alternate between you know the upper and lower half of the boundary I guess Pay attention to where the circles are because the circles are the really dangerous part of all of this because basically they are the things which are going to kill you if anything, you know? But if you can pay attention to that, even though Marissa is not directly damaging her, it's okay. It's not that hard a card to do. 
Alright, now we get to see her last spell, and now she really brings out the border abuse. I mean, this is just nasty. It's border plus aimed stuff. And she is immune until at least 30 seconds left. I think it's actually about 25. That makes this card very, very hard, and I just misplayed it, unfortunately. But the idea is she would have just gone and repeated the same bit as the first phase, and it keeps going and going and going. Very, very long card, very difficult to actually get, because... You really don't have much time to do anything, and if you're unlucky and Reimu charges towards you with the purple ones, good luck, basically. That kind of happened there as well, but nah. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, it's only a bonus card anyway, so it's fine. And we have over a hundred million, yeah, over a hundred million, yeah, we have a billion points by stage four. No wonder my score is so high in this game normally, wow.